Are waterproof mascaras dangerous for your eyes and your body? Keep watching to find out. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, and my passion, which is eye makeup health. And that's what we're talking about today. We are looking at waterproof mascaras. Now, for years, I've never liked waterproof mascaras. And mainly the reason was because they're so difficult to remove. The amount of traction and force you need to put on the lashes to remove the waterproof mascara or waterproof liner usually causes a lot of lash loss. It can cause dermatitis of your eyelid skin and it can cause creping. So personally, I've never recommended them and I don't use them. But even worse is a new study that just came out from Notre Dame, which showed that 82% of waterproof mascaras have PFAS. What's PFAS? PFAS stands for polyfluoro tetraethylene. And there's a big group of chemicals that fall under the category of PFAS, but that's one of them. And it's a chemical compound that's used in makeup to make it more spreadable, to make it more durable, and to make it water resistant or waterproof. You'll also find PFAS in a lot of different types of products all around your home. Teflon, non-stick cooking utensils and cooking pans, waterproof sports equipment, in the wrappers for a lot of food packaging items, ones like hamburgers and those kind of things where they want it to be waterproof, there's PFAS in those. Um, even in the gowns that we use for scrubbing for surgery, since we want those to be water resistant. So it's in a lot of different things. So it really stands to reason that about 97% of us have PFAS in our blood serums. Now, what's the big deal about it? Problem is it's a toxic chemical. It contains fluorine and they call it the forever chemical. And the reason they call it the forever chemical is because it stays around in your body and in the environment for decades. It's very hard to get rid of. It's very hard to break down. Now, there've been a lot of environmental studies that have examined the effects of PFAS on humans, but that's typically when you're ingesting it, when it's an environmental pollutant. And there has been a correlation with infertility, with kidney issues, liver damage, thyroid dysfunction, and even cancers. They've also done research and studies in laboratory animals examining the effects of PFAS in really high concentrations. And it causes those similar types of medical issues, as I just mentioned before. So what's the harm though in makeup? Well, here's the thing, in eye makeup specifically, it does get absorbed into your body. And I think sometimes people think, oh, mascara is just on the outside of your eye. How is that really going to affect? Well, mascara does get into your tears and your tears drain through the nasal lacrimal system down into your nose and they can be absorbed systemically. Now there's no safe amount of PFAS. So we don't exactly know what's a dangerous amount, but studies are still pending on all of that kind of information. But if you wanna be safe, it's something just to avoid completely. And they even found that 58% of other eye makeup products like liners, creams, and shadows had PFAS. All right, so then it should be easy to figure out, right? It should be listed on the ingredients of the mascara or last liners. Unfortunately, no. And here's the thing. The reason that it's not listed is because sometimes there are some chemicals which then break down to form PFAS. And so PFAS is not actually listed as an ingredient. Also, there's a general category. So they might just say ethicone and it's actually this specific type of ethicone which can have fluorine in it. So there's a lot of different ways that PFAS can be in your makeup and you not even know it. So actually 28 of the 29 products tested in the Notre Dame study did not have PFAS listed as one of the main ingredients or as an ingredient at all. So 
that's really concerning because many of us likely depend on looking at that ingredients list. You know that I do. I sit here and read it out loud when I'm doing videos to examine what we're putting on our eyes. And if it's not listed and the manufacturers are not required to disclose it, how do we know? And that's really why there's a lot of legislation going on right now to prevent cosmetics from having any of these ingredients. Again, they just make the ingredients long lasting and long wearing. And I know personally, when I was wearing a mask all the time, I would wear long wearing lipstick so it wouldn't get on the mask. And they found the highest incidence in the mascaras, as I mentioned, but also in lipsticks and foundations as well. So it's not just in eye makeup. So names that you can be on the lookout for on your ingredient list, and I'm just gonna read them out to you so you can take a look. Um, polytetrafluoroethylene, as I mentioned before, perfluorooctyl, triethoxysilane, perfluoroonyl dimethicone, perfluorodecalin, and perfluorohexane. So a lot of the PERS, but again, there's ways that you can have the PFAS in your makeup and it doesn't have that specific ingredient listed. I'm gonna list in the details just a bunch of different versions of the names of the different types of chemicals that are PFAS. So you can look at your ingredient list. Don't just think that because it's not on your makeup that then your makeup is safe because as mentioned before, there are some variants where they might not have that specific name, but they use the general overall class name and that's what's problematic. And so it's difficult to know what's exactly in your mascara or your eyeliner. So other ingredients like methicone, silicone polymers, acrylate have PFAS versions. So like I said, it might just say methicone on your mascara and then you think that you're safe because it's not the poly, you know, perflora, blah, blah, blah. You're not safe because they might just use that general term, but the PFAS version is the one that's in your waterproof mascara. And I don't want you to think that all of these manufacturers are behaving in a really despicable way and adding these you know, toxic chemicals knowingly. Some honestly did not even realize that these chemicals were in their products because the supply chains are so convoluted and complicated. Shop from lines where you are really, really aware of what their supply chain is, that it's, you know, goes here, goes there, goes this, so that it's a not some convoluted way to get from the plant to the customer. And there are a lot of products and a lot of lines where it's really easy to examine. So if you are of childbearing age or you just really want to be careful and safe and you don't even want to have to think or worry that what you're putting on your face or near the delicate areas of your eye where there's mucous membranes that allow product to get absorbed systemically. If you just don't want to think about any of that, you want to be conservative the way that I do, then avoid any of those makeups that say long lasting, durable, long wearing, water resistant, waterproof, because those additive ingredients, the PFAS that manufacturers typically are adding to the makeup, it's to make it durable and waterproof or water resistant. So again, it's in everything. I'm not saying that makeup is the only thing and we really don't know if the dosages or the levels that are in makeup are concerning or not. But if you wanna be safe, then avoid any of those words when you're looking at your makeup. And the second thing is, just because it says natural or organic or clean doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have these ingredients either. Because some of the clean products, so-called clean products, which aren't really clean, can have the PFAS in them too. So you just need to be careful. So for me, all those waterproof mascaras, every waterproof liners, all of that, is out the window and just be really safe and conservative because we're finding new information every day as they do more and more studies and more and more research. And this is just not something that I personally want to take a chance on. But as always, the education and the material, the information is there for you guys to make an informed decision. If you feel like the risk is very low, then you do you, all right? And I will continue to be conservative and advocate for everyone to be safe about their eye makeup health. 
All right, guys, I hope this was helpful for you. I'm not trying to fear monger at all, but just wanted to bring to your attention this new study, which I thought was super interesting and super important for everyone that's a makeup lover like myself to be knowledgeable about. Please hit like, subscribe, follow, everything. I would love it if you do. It helps me make sure that I'm making content that you guys are enjoying and that is resonating with you. And until next time, I am Dr. Rupa. Bye-bye.